Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map we're going to be exploring is simply titled Bleak City. And to look around, it's certainly living up to the name. Now, to look at the geometry and lighting, you may think that this is like the typical 2 megabyte workshop fodder that you find in spades and not all that interesting. But the reason I'm exploring this today is because this was actually recommended by my friend Matthew. It was uploaded way back in 2014. Hello, little doggy. And he said that this is the first map on the workshop that really spooked him. I feel like these days, we've gotten really used to seeing some insanely professional looking maps from some really talented creators. And don't get me wrong, I love those. But I, I feel like stuff like this is a more honest look at the majority of the content on the workshop. A majority of the content on the workshop, both before this new wave of scenic maps, and even before, I mean, you remember dragging and dropping files from garysmod.org? All I know about this is that this was the first thing to spook Matthew in this game, and I gotta see what it is. Because when you went onto the workshop, it, it used to be you had no idea what you were getting into. So let's just start exploring and <laughs> knowing that there's got to be something. And maybe it's to do with that tall, dark building in the fog. I mean, this all looks like very basic geometry, but ooh, if we have a peek in the window here, <laughs> an overturned chair and a streak of blood going to the door. Can we open this? Nope. We'll never know. Like I said, this map came out in 2014, and I think that was when people first kind of started to recognize the inherent creepiness of this game, or at least started to talk about it. So maybe this was a deliberate attempt to bring out that feeling. I mean, you could say that the blocky, angular, toy box nature of it is part of what gives Source its charm. <laughs> And you know, maybe, maybe it's just exploiting that for some truly cheap jump scares. God, wh see, why did that get me so badly? That shouldn't even register on my radar after all the stuff I've been through, but I think it's just the power of expectations. The expectations placed on me by the fact that this was recommended, and the simple nostalgia factor. I think when I look at a, a space that looks like this, I'm reminded of when I was 13 years old, playing this late into the night on, like, I don't know, RP Richland or something. And feeling like, did I just see somebody walk around that corner? Did I just hear something that's not part of the map ambiance? Oh, we've got a little playground over here. Oh, hello. Darwin, are the other kids bullying you again? Uh, letting them bury you in the sand like that? Well, you're gonna have to dig yourself out of this one. I can't keep fighting your battles for you. The sooner you learn to stick up for yourself, well, besides just sticking up out of the sand, you know, the happier you'll be for it. Hmm, maybe this is some kind of train station? Oh, speaking of, I actually really do enjoy this, like, genre of map. It's actually, I guess, ahead of its time in that regard. I mean, horror maps have always sort of existed, but I guess the example I would point to is a map I played a while back called GM Haunted Train Station. A map that is open to explore, but has these sort of scares pre-scripted in. I don't know why, there's just, like, it's just scratching just the right spot for me when it comes to these experiences. But from a certain angle, you really do get the uh, full effect of the fog, the frequent streetlights lining this place with not a soul around, and very minimal ambiance. At first I thought there wasn't any, but in here we can hear the flicker of the lights and just, uh, I didn't actually expect that to open, just the occasional squeaking of those light poles. It's like everyone just left in a hurry.
or they're all huddled upstairs, but I can't actually seem to jump up there. Even though a crouch jump should be able to get me there, I assume there's some sort of invisible wall. Alright, moving on. You are still moving on across the street. That was a real sudden gust of wind that came in. Man, it, it's so well lit. And yet somehow the desolation really stands out. Not any sign of uh, disruption on the streets, but if we look up into the windows, yeah. <laughs> I love this, like, inferred apocalypse that just exists all over. In that way, I suppose it's almost like a sort of proto-GM shambles. Although, in fairness, I think that map might have first come out around this time, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my... <laughs> well, I suppose this map deserves credit for a stalker jump scare that didn't use the stalker sound. Oh, I can't tell, actually. Is there something out there in the distance? Like, way beyond the trees? Uh, maybe that'll be a job for the noclip run. Uh, in any case, it seems the bar is open. Yeah, just put it on my tab. I don't know, I just wanted to say that. Yep! That wasn't near as dramatic as I wanted. <laughs> okay, that one did! <laughs> oh, I had forgotten how much I love those little starts, no matter how cheap it is. But actually, you know, now that I think about it, this map may lack in production value, but look, looking at it from the perspective of playing it in 2024, I'm just thinking, it's kind of reminding me of something like Ghost Town Mine Ride and Shooting Gallery. I mean, you come in here, it looks, it presents like a really old map, which of course it is. But something about how quaint these types of scares have become makes it feel like I'm walking through a haunted attraction. And yet, at the same time, the inherent creepiness of Source makes it feel more like I'm walking through a, a haunted haunted attraction, if that makes any sense. Like, this place has been long abandoned, and maybe even though this was intended to scare, there's something else that's latched on? Why are you letting me come through this back alley, game? We can't open these doors. And with that gust of wind, I almost felt it on the back of my neck. Hmm. <sighs> okay, that was actually genuinely pretty creepy. Can I get out here? No, no, no. Uh. God, that actually, that actually made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Which I suppose were already partially raised from the wind sound at just the right time. Something about the fact that it wasn't necessarily even a horror noise. The fact that it just seemed like a regular old man. But that groan of pain just behind me. Oh, are these windows 3D? Uh, just blood everywhere. Anything going on in this park? I'm just kind of hunting for triggers. Nothing here, but there is a garbage heap back this way. Wow, they've really let it pile up. Oh, hey there. This dog looks sick. We could jump up and over to get behind there, or we could climb into this. Oh, nope, it wouldn't let me. Was there like an invisible wall or something? Okay, well, that brings us back here. Can we, ooh, enter this big, dark warehouse? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, okay, ooh, ooh, well done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm enjoying this way too much. Anything back here? No? 
Let's keep an eye upstairs. Well, I was right about one thing. The fact that this does just feel like workshop fodder does kind of make it land more. Hello, what are you? You've got a grav gun, although I guess it didn't help you much. I'm honestly shocked. Uh, can I... Wait, can I try to pick this up? Ah, there we go. And now we can pick up the duplicated one that we just got. Yep! <laughs> well, there doesn't seem to be anything further up here. Except a whole lot of darkness and emptiness. Okay, down we go. Question is, which way should we go now? Uh, yeah, I suppose going the opposite way up the street couldn't hurt. Of course, we've got to check every back alley. Hello, this is broken wide open. Should I try and climb in? You know, it's genuinely shocking when it doesn't actually try to pull anything on me. Unless I missed it somehow. And the really scarce ambiance certainly does make you notice it when it goes completely silent. Oh, this looks good. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Tell you what. Yep. Just give me the jump scare. Uh. Oh, hmm. Well, we got out of that in a surprisingly tame fashion. I was expecting stalkers all over the place and red and screaming and all that. Don't well, call me shocked, but my heart is pleasantly surprised. And it doesn't seem to be anything over here. I guess the last thing to try then would be this car park over here? Hello? That, mm. Were you there before? That actually stopped my heart a little bit, seeing just two normal people, just... Well, maybe. I don't even know what this map was going for at this point. There's such a refreshing mix of scares. But some of them seem so out of tone, so above tone. Um, okay, that's unexpected. Tell you what else is going to be unexpected. Is that just the pallet or did something move? Now what? Was there something over here? Something I should know about? Oh, my lights have gone out all over. So that happened. It didn't even give me a jump scare to satisfy the rising tension. That is so mean. Well, we could try making our way down this alleyway. Come on, you. Ooh, my hand is literally inside you. You don't want to break. Oh, there's a whole thing here. The windows are see-through, but conspicuously boarded. Oh, 
why am I doing this? I'm such a horror movie protagonist. It's like somebody was chased down to here, stood with their knife at the ready, ready to get whatever came through, and then something just grabbed him through the roof and flew off. Doesn't seem to be anything back here, though. Oh, that was a teleport, too. What does that do for us? Well, we can get all the way up here. Although there are still invisible walls, it seems like. Oh, this one enterable as well. This one enterable as well. Look, oh my god. Alright, just do it. Just do what you're gonna do. Please, game. I need, I need it. Just do what you're gonna do. Oh, you're really gonna leave me like that? Just knowing that that happened and... Yeah, this map definitely uh, makes decisions on what it wants to do and when, that's for sure. This was openable as well. We can't get out through there. Oh, that door ajar into the hallway, starting us off in the unlit maintenance corridor. Horror baby. Horror baby, what are you doing here? Okay, I'll just... Uh, I suppose I should try and pick you up, right? Then again, maybe not. Why is the wind suddenly getting so loud in here? What did you do, horror baby? You spilled your raspberry jam sandwich all over the place. Uh. I've never had something like that happen before, and it was certainly bizarre. This gets us up here. But again, nowhere to see. Huh. Where am I? Oh, hey, hey, sorry, hope I'm not intruding on anything. So many of these spaces are actually enterable, it's so cool. Every place we enter is like a, a massacre that we just couldn't see from the streets. I hear footsteps. Oh. Are they maybe upstairs? Oh, no. Come on, let me through. Let me through. Oh, I know there's not really going to be anything up there, but come on. Well, now we know this is so trigger-based, uh... You guys are gyrating funnily. What happens if we actually enter here? Nothing much, it seems like. Although there's a conspicuous gap in the in the wall here. I don't know if you can see that, but okay, I guess that's fine. Yeah, you know, the teleports. Wow, in this place are very strange. All right, well, since that seems to be everything there is to see, uh, why don't we try no clip? Good, her right, oh my god. I really did not expect there to be anything else. Let me guess. Oh, there's another invisible wall right here. You're actually just walking around out here. <laughs> this map actually does seem to understand the intrinsic horrifying factor of just being on one of these maps alone and seeing somebody walking in the distance. Or, in this case, very close. Well, I guess let's try seeing what's beyond over there. Looks like we can see sky... Hello? 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 What is this? What? And I'm just teleported right back out. What was that? Hang on. Uh, did I miss something? Maybe at the playground itself? It looked like a playground. 
Did I have to maybe touch something? We've got buckets buried. I, hmm. The second I try and no clip, all right, well that teleported me to here. What is it that I'm meant to be observing with that? Is there a way to access that or is it just a no clip bonus? G-Man's just kind of like walking amongst them and from here, I can hear them around me, but I can't see them. I can see something over there. Yeah, there's some of the rooms. And there's you just walking about up there. You're the one making the footstep noises. Yeah, imagine having that job. Creepy attic walker. I could do that. I just had a look on the workshop page and couldn't find any information on how to access that weird red playground area. Actually, I couldn't find any information on it at all, but I did find some comments that seemed to imply that this map is actually older than its 2014 workshop upload date. Which I guess sort of makes sense, because this is just so... I guess emblematic of everything classic Gary's Mod maps were, you know? They weren't always made maybe with the most skill, but you could tell that they were going for something, and man, this really nails it. It is just so... It's such a weird variety of scares, I think, that makes it hard to really settle into any one expectation. Which is probably why it kept getting me so hard, even in spite of the sort of cheesy nature. It's not really going for anything but to be enjoyable when you want to get spooked, and I really appreciate it for that. I think it's kind of cool how this map has the sort of classic look of, like, a first-timer screwing around in Hammer. And yet, there's such a wide variety of scares. Of course, the first ones we encountered and sort of set the mood were these pop-up zombies and stalkers playing scare noises. But then there's the overall nature of it. The minimal ambiance, the empty streets, but no real signs of harm or horror. There are just these little hints here and there if we decide to peek in the windows. And only once we start exploring, once we start going inside, and do we see that indoors is where the absolute massacre is. It actually sort of reminds me of Cry of Fear in that way, where the minimal design actually... Well, I don't know, I guess between that and the design of the map itself, it makes it hard to set the expectations for it. Whenever I play a horror game or map, you know, you kind of learn to speak its language, but in this case you can't really prepare for what it's going to throw at you next because it's so haphazard. It's goofy, creepy, just on occasion genuinely scary, and it's just such a reminder of its day. Back when, when you went on the workshop, you had no idea what you were going to get, and just anything was possible. Even though so much more is possible now, I, I think stuff like this, if anything, does a good job of putting you back into that younger mindset when experiencing games. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this map out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.